Hey guys, what's going on? Johnny here from What's Spinning here tonight to chat about this new Marissa Nadler and Steven Brodsky album, Drone Flower. Marissa Nadler and Steven Brodsky. Who'd have thunk this album was coming this year, but apparently this is a thing and it's here upon us. Marissa Nadler. Marissa Nadler, to me, is killing it in folk right now more than anybody. She's one of my favorite voices in the world. She's an awesome, awesome singer and has released some of my favorite folk albums of the last few years, like July and the Leave the Lights On demos and the Strangers album. But, to me, I feel like I was slightly let down with Marissa's last album for My Crimes last year. I did still love it and give it a very positive review, but I didn't love it as much as her last few projects. Now, Stephen Brodsky, on the other hand, has been around in a completely different way. He's been in a slew of metal and metalcore acts over the years, from Cave-In to Converge for a little while to, most recently, Mutoid Man. And when I heard these two were making an album together on Marissa's label, Sacred Bones, one of my favorite record labels in the world, I got super excited to hear it. And I'm telling you, from listening to these opening singles, I got goosebumps. Let's chat about this album. From the early singles here, like For the Sun, it's just so obvious that this is just such a fresh start for the both of these two. Like instantly, this is shocking for Marissa. Steven's very crunchy, very brutal guitar licks throughout this track are just very gnarly. They never get too heavy or in your face, but they're always sort of present. And alongside just how freaking heavenly Marissa sounds, this is so fresh, so invigorating. Not to mention it's just so pensive. This one just sort of rolls on, slowly adding layer after layer. And I love the way that Steven's guitar just sounds so massive rolling through this song. I can actually see fans of, like, Chelsea Wolfe being really into this. And not for nothing, but their cover of Guns N' Roses' Estranged might be the best track here. For a damn cover song, not to mention a Guns N' Roses cover song, this is awe-inspiring. Obviously, this is already sort of one of the more emotional tunes in the Guns N' Roses catalog, but this cover takes it completely to the next level. It is emotionally draining and absolutely heartbreaking. Not to mention Marissa's very sweet, almost innocent performance here. It's just so spot on. Steven's performance here is just so bluesy and so broken down. And the occasional more electric riffs that roll in as well. Yes, please. Even though this track is well over seven minutes, and that's big for Marissa. She doesn't usually touch songs that long. This is not boring at all. I would have wanted it to go another couple of minutes if it could. Stunning. The ambient sounds at the beginning of Buried in Love just instantly get me hyped. Pianos here are very beautiful, but they're also undeniably very creepy. This is absolutely a very sunny and more hopeful tune. But Marissa here, she sounds like a freaking angel. And yeah, it's beautiful, but it has this silky veil of darkness over the entire track. It brings it down just enough. And even though this is one of the shorter tracks here, it's very grand. It has a very epic feel to it. Even these handful of instrumental interludes, for the most part, freaking rock. Space Ghost 1, which starts this album off, has a very heavy, dramatic start. Like the stark contrast between just how heavy and foreboding these pianos are, with Marissa's very heavenly vocals floating through the background. Stunning. This may be a two-minute instrumental intro, but it just sets the very wintry, dark tone for the rest of this album. Morbid Mist, very late in the album, takes a turn for the more mystic. Like, it's actually very hard to pay very close attention to this track due to the lapping guitars that are seemingly overlapping constantly and the absolutely heavenly vocals floating through the background. And while this is the shortest track here, it just shows the wonderful contrast between these two artists. Space Ghost 2, about halfway through, it's not as powerful as the album's intro, but it's still pretty good. It's big and it's powerful, but it's not nearly as dramatic. I just feel like Space Ghost 1, the way that it brought us into this album, was just so simple yet so effective. But this track isn't really that perfect. As a matter of fact, it probably could have been left off of here. But I digress. The rest of this album, for the most part, is pretty freaking awesome. Now, if you're a fan of Marissa's very stripped down, dark, ambient folk, you're really going to love Watch the Time. Like, I love how hypnotizing the guitar here is. It's just so easy to get sucked into it. Like, obviously, they produced this album together, but here, on this track, and on other tracks here, they sound like they're, like, two lovers from different dimensions reaching out to one another. They sound otherworldly. It really creates a very wild, interesting effect, and it's fascinating. 
And as far as an atmosphere goes, this is one of my favorite tracks here. Also is very dreary. And in a weird way, I'm almost getting like a desert rock vibe from this. Like, yes, please, I want to hear more of that. And if I wasn't getting desert rock vibes on that, i definitely get them on Dead West. This is just this very darkened, bluesy folk rock tune, once again, that just sounds so emotionally drained. Barissa always kind of sounds like lost, reaching out once again from like another planet or another dimension. But it's also incredibly straightforward. Like these aren't tunes that you need to sit with forever. These are instantaneous and beautiful and chilling. And even more so if you're familiar with Marissa's sound, like if you're a fan of hers, like albums like Strangers and July, you're gonna wanna hear this. And not to mention, with these added instrumentals around Marissa, I feel like there's even more of a great sorrow to some of these songs. Like this track and this album is pretty freaking incredible. Like, shout out to Steven Brodsky because I didn't know that Marissa could sound even more otherworldly and heavenly. Honestly, like, I don't have a lot of bad things to say about this album. For one, I kind of wish it was longer. Like, with the sheer length of the estranged single, I kind of was hoping for, like, a much bigger album, maybe, like, 15 minutes longer. But outside of that, I don't have a lot of complaints here. Like, if I had to choose one track that I really distinctly did not like, it's Shades Apart. This one's actually pretty different. It doesn't even sound like it belongs here. It's easily the sunniest track on the album. And I mean, Marissa's performance here really isn't that bad. It's actually one of her more wholesome performances of the bunch. And some of the harmonies floating around behind her are actually beautiful. But without the big, bulky, dark atmosphere, I feel like this one doesn't affect me as much. As a matter of fact, overall, I'm really not feeling this at all. It really doesn't do anything for me. It just feels massively incomplete. As a matter of fact, it almost sounds like a demo. But Marissa and Steven end off this album with another fantastic cover, In Spite of Me, originally a morphine track. And hot take, I think it's better than the original. I am familiar with Morphine's original track. It's very solid. It's a really great tune. But Marissa and Steven take this track and make it their own. Mostly because Marissa has this vocal styling that she always kind of sounds like she's just so longing, so reaching out for some lover. It's honestly one of the folkier and sweeter sounds of the album, but compared to Shades Apart, it actually goes somewhere. It actually affects me. As a matter of fact, it's one of my favorite tracks here. It's a brilliant song, and it ends off this collaborative album on an amazing note. So yeah, I might be biased because I'm a big fan of both of these musicians, but this album freaking rocks. Steven and Marissa work off each other wonderfully, and Steven ends up making Marissa sound even more otherworldly, more dark than ever, and Marissa brings this haunting beauty to Steven's music as well. It's just such a fresh start for both of them, and some of the influences, like including desert rock in some ports, so interesting, so fascinating. Like, I really hope they would do another album. I doubt they will. Life can't be that good, but this is freaking awesome for now. I'm feeling a decent eight on this album, but let me know what you guys think down below. If you like the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you guys would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, guys.